I have been on a journey for quite some time to host as much as I possibly can within my home lab. Now, probably the most important thing, only second to maybe your personal documents, is your personal photo library. And like many others, I was a customer of Google Photos, uh, the Amazon Photo Service. I even used both of them hand in hand because I still had the mindset at the time that I couldn't trust just one of them to keep my data secure and safe. And even looking back on it, that mindset was kind of flawed because you really shouldn't have your personal photo collection being handled by some giant tech conglomerate. And that is why I used Google Takeout to pull everything I can from their service, completely wipe out all the photos from those third-party services, and self-host it all by myself. At first, I just had it in a share. I was doing uh, just random backups where I drag and drop everything into a folder. And then I got a Synology NAS, and that is really cool because then I was using their Photos application, which features probably the most important thing in this whole scenario, and that is a mobile application to automatically sync and back up your photos. And honestly, using Synology Photos it is great. Never had any issues. It works great. The UI is relatively nice. It's missing a lot of the same features that something like Google Photos has. But then with Synology, you are dependent on using their hardware for the service forever. And that's where this comes in. This right here is Image. This is a platform to self-host and back up all of your photos in a beautiful web GUI that features a ton of uh, features <laughs> that you'd expect in a service like this. And better yet, it's completely free and open source. There are no features that are behind a paywall or anything like that. There is an option to buy it, but that's merely a way to go ahead and support the project if you would like to. There's absolutely nothing you gain from buying it other than supporting the project, which is great. Now right here on their GitHub, there is a huge disclaimer warning. This is a active development project and it's recommended not to use this as the only way to back up your photos and videos. So having a second solution such as Synology Photos or doing it the old school way, I do an R sync between my image library and a offsite server. So that way I don't lose any data. But with their disclaimer here aside, I have been nothing but impressed with this application, everything that it provides. Let's go into my actual instance and dive into some of the features. And then later on, we're gonna get into installing it and all that. So right here, this is image. You can see the first thing I have the uh, one, two, three years ago. So you could see what was happening on that day. For example, if I go two years ago here, it gives us a nice little slideshow of the things I took a picture of around this time about a year ago or three years ago now. <laughs> It supports live photos, so if I hover over this one, you can see that it's going to play. These are uh, before pictures of a little remodel thing that I'm gonna do. If we go over here to explore, we get the people that are on my server, as well as a variety of places, just like you'd expect with those larger tech company services. So for example, if I go to Amboy here, we get a whole bunch of cool stuff. And if we go back, let's say I wanted to look at pictures of myself for some reason, here we go. We have the before after pictures of that, uh, Chinese phone video that I covered, and then we have some videos for a uh, install of some uh, automated um, blinds that I'm gonna be covering in a future video. And then for example, if I go to like view all people here, I already went through and really went through everything to have everybody ID'd properly. But when you first go through it, you can see if there's multiples of the same people, you could combine them. You can reassign people to help it kind of figure out who's who a little bit better. There's a lot of things in that regard. And then if we go over to map here, this is just like those other services. We have a full world map of everything. So you can see I've kind of been some places, Hawaii, a couple places in China. We have uh, Europe over here. So if I go down and we head over to Berlin, Germany, if I just click on that, oh, that was good. We could go through and check out some of the pictures that I uh, took over there in Germany, mostly for uh, a couple different Nextcloud events. Within an actual photo, for example, we can share it, resize it, copy it, hide or show the more detailed information, favorite it, trash it, and then here we have options such as set it as a profile picture. We can replace it directly with a different upload, add to a shared album, add to album. If I view it in the timeline, for example, it's gonna drop me into my main photo timeline in the specific date that this picture was taken. So we could see here a lot of fun Germany type stuff, including like the uh, Berlin Wall or a chunk of the Berlin Wall here. And then down here we could see the exact specific location that picture was taken. So if I go back out of here, head over to sharing. I don't have any shared albums, but I do have other people on this instance. So if I go over here 
and go to my administration settings. You can see I have three users, three people that are in my house. I have my wife and my niece. You can set quotas, manage their accounts, all that fun stuff. If we go over to jobs, this is what it's doing in the background and it'll actually notify you if there were any errors or issues extracting any data from pictures such as um, extracting the metadata, library tasks, generating thumbnails for various assets and there's really a lot of different stuff down here. Face detection, facial recognition, transcoding videos and more. And then we have settings. So here you could really dive deep into how you want everything to function and manage. So for example, image settings, you could change the format of your thumbnails. So for example, if I wanted this to be JPEGs, I could do that, change the resolution, change the quality. And then all I would do is click save and this might have to like regenerate every thumbnail. I hope not hit save. Let's go to jobs to see if it's gonna try doing that. Click on missing. Okay, cool. It's not gonna try to do that right now. Uh, we have external libraries, so you can add different libraries from different sources if you'd like to. And last but not least, we have status. So you can see I have 24,000 pictures, almost 3,000 videos using about 400 gigabytes of space. And then we can see further detailed on who is using the most amount of that space. So really some in-depth and feature-rich stuff. And of course, there's a mobile application with all of the same functionality and probably, like I said in the beginning, the best thing about it is the ability to use that app to back up directly to this. For me, you can see I have it set up here on a local domain. So to back up when I'm not on my home network, I have to connect to Twingate or something like that to actually back up photos. But I prefer this because I don't want, really want this exposed to the external internet. So now, how do we actually install this? Now, there is a number of ways to go about this. Let's go over to their documentation here and if you go down to install first we can see the requirements of course it's running face recognition and all that so it is using a little bit of resources it recommends six gigabytes and four cores to be able to run this with max efficiency and fluidness and of course this is going to be running on docker docker compose whatever your preference is now there are a number of ways to go ahead and install this. Of course it's Docker, but they have more detailed information on a specific Docker use case. For example, Unraid here. If I click on that, it goes over the templates you're gonna to want to grab, how to create a compose stack, what you're gonna to wanna to input in your environmental file and all that. And this is actually how I currently have it deployed. So if I head over to my Unraid server and go over to Docker, we could see everything set up here. Now this isn't the prettiest. I need to kind of go through and change some of these uh, icons out and whatnot, but you could see right here, I have an image stack. And I just set this up by following the guide right over here, step-by-step. Step. The only thing that I did differently is I got rid of the machine learning uh, container option, which I personally don't need or use. I found that the system is more than fine at handling what I upload with the specifications that it has. But if you go over here to Portainer, for example, it's gonna go over how to set all this up. Kubernetes, we have Docker Compose, which is their personal recommended one, which they go over how to get it, how to get the environmental file, set up hardware transcoding if that's something you need, which I'm not even using that. I found that it's, even after a large backup process, it's not really that necessary for how I have it set up. But just to give you guys a little example, let's say I want to throw up another instance here on Portainer. I have a few different Portainer instances. So if I go over here to Homar, down here on the bottom, I have a link to all my Portainer instances. Let's say I wanted to run this on my Nextcloud machine. So I'd go open this up, go ahead and log in and connect to this local instance. Then from there, we're just gonna go stacks. We're gonna add a new stack. This is going to be my image stack. And then here in the documentation, we are going to grab the compose YAML. So if we just open this up, give it a copy, drop it into our web editor here. And then from there, we're gonna want to replace the uh, env file name with stack env. ENV file is going to be stack. And then this right here for the machine learning container. And then from there, all we need to do is scroll down to the environmental variables and then click on advanced mode. Now from here, we're going to want to grab the ENV file. So let's grab this and give this a copy and then drop it on in here. Now here's where you're gonna to want to actually make some edits. We have the upload location. So I am just going to throw this in, let's say home Brandon image uploads and then we're going to put this in the same kind of directory but instead of uploads we're going to put this in db for database and this is just a demo so i'm not going to change this right now but you're going to want to change your username and password for postgres and these things right here but if i go ahead and switch back to simple mode you could see it automatically puts everything in there for us and you can change the values here as well if you would like to 
Now I believe it's going to automatically create those directories for us. We will go ahead and double check, but I'm just going to deploy the stack here, see if it throws out any errors at us. Which there we go, it looks like the stack was deployed successfully and we could go ahead and check this. Let's go to our image stack, everything's starting up. We have the server, Redis, Postgres, and machine learning. If we go to the server here to view the logs, it's initializing everything so it might take it a sec to start up for the very first time. While it does that, let's see what port we're running on. We really didn't go through and customize this at all. We have image server, so it's going to be on 2283. So let's jump back to stack here. It looks like everything started up and healthy. So we should be able to navigate to the IP address of the server at the port. And here we go. Welcome to image. So all we do is click getting started and we set up our very first account here. Give ourselves a name and click on sign up. And then we go ahead and log in. And there we go. Welcome to Brandon Hopkins. So we choose our theme, ah, whether that be the light or dark theme. We go over to our privacy settings so you can enable or disable map and version check. So now storage templates, this will automatically organize files. It's turned off by default. So if you want to learn more, you can read the documentation. I'm just going to leave it off since that's what they recommend. So I'm going to hit done and there you go. Now this right here is the app. I'm going to go ahead and sign out of this real quick, just so you could see it on a new instance. So first I'm going to change this IP to the IP of the new instance we just set up. So I'm going to hit next pop in our credentials here and go ahead and log on in. So here what you're seeing is pictures on my phone currently, not what is actually on image. And you can see that with the little cloud logo in the corner. If I go ahead and right next to the B, there's a little cloud up. If I click on this, what it's going to do is scan my phone. By default, it goes with recent to all, but if I go here, select, you could customize if you want only specific albums to back up, but on an iPhone, recent is the album that holds all of your pictures. So I'm going to go back here. We have 281 things to upload and 281 remaining because this is a new instance. If I click on start backup, you can see it goes ahead and starts the process. It goes one image at a time. I almost said one image at a time. So I'm not going to sit here and back up absolutely everything. We're going to head back to the computer here. And if I refresh this, you can see we're getting some things in here. We have a thumbnail I just created, a couple pictures that are on my phone. And if I go over to our administration settings, go over to jobs, you can see right now we have an active job generating those thumbnails. And yeah, that, that's truly about it. And just so you can kind of see what the file structure looks like, it's not the simplest file structure. We can see we have image right there automatically cr uh, created itself. So if I CD into the image folder, LS, we could see DB and uploads that we created in that uh, those environmental variables. So if I go into our uploads, you can see we have encoded video, library, profile, thumbnails, and upload. So CD, let's go to upload, which then it gets into just like a string of text that's kind of difficult to understand what exactly is going on. So it's definitely not the uh, most friendly format when it comes to reading various files in a directory scheme. There's an actual file. If we go back to uploads and go to the library, there's nothing in there yet. Let's go to profile. You see what I'm trying to say. That's probably the only thing that's in my opinion, a little bit better about Synology photos is kind of the raw file structure layout is a little more um, user friendly when it comes to reading it, but that's about it. So yeah, that's image. That is my new primary backup solution for all my personal videos, uh, photos, and I even use it for like my business needs. If I record something on a phone, I just later go to image, download it to a project uh, folder, and we're good to go. Anything I mentioned will be down below, including their documentation, my own GitHub repository, which you can see here, this is my whole home lab setup. I'll go ahead and throw image in here. I'll probably throw it under this apps page right here because it's pretty easy to set up. It doesn't need its full own dedicated guide, but do check this out. There's, there's a lot of fun stuff that I'm building here. This is far from complete, but I do recommend you check out my uh, home lab GitHub page. Everything that I'm doing is slowly being migrated in here. And when things do require some documentation and tutorials, you, you're going to be getting that as you can see here. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good bye.